Okay, guys, so we're just wrapping up now on magazines, um, advantages and disadvantages. Um, okay, you can align with specific content with magazines, reach mass or class audiences. I would just add to that that I think the something special about magazine audiences are that they like to read. Um, they like to get information that way. Um, they also are very uh, closely uh, aligned and they like very much the magazines that they've chosen. So there's a, a relationship between the media form and the audience that we definitely don't see in Out of Home. I don't think we really see it in newspapers, but with magazines where you choose them and you're many times paying a subscription um, to get it regularly, there is a special relationship. Excellent color reproduction. Um, long life in terms of they're saved. It's not like a newspaper where it's one day and over. And magazines can be passed along to other readers. Paper order deals, yes, are possible in magazines. If you take a run of publication, run of press uh, position, as we saw with Vogue in Britain, the cheapest option on the rate card was, you know, take a page and let us put it in anywhere we want to. And if you want to do paper order, um, magazines, uh, particularly those who are not as successful, who do not have as many paying advertisers, will print an extra page if they think what you produce is going to create some revenue and they'll get a share of it and make some money. Yes, good death of sale is possible. And yes, it's good for direct if people see the ad, because you can do a lot of persuasion, uh, you know, from awareness to um, consideration to preference to purchase with a magazine if they see the ad. And again, the printing printed version has great color reproduction. Disadvantages are versus direct mail that, uh, well, you don't have, you know, infinite space to tell a story because it's expensive to buy pages in magazines. Um, with most magazines, there's a long lead time between uh, submitting your materials for publication in the day it hits the gets mailed and hits the newsstand, so it's not a a tactical tool for you know doing battle out there with your competitors on offers and things like that. It's really a, more of a branding long term tool. It, yeah, it can be direct also, but it's it's not a responsive tactical medium in the marketplace. Very distribution leads to lower response, slower response, meaning unlike a newspaper that gets to everybody the day of publication, magazines, you know, between being mailed and, and being bought on the newsstand, it just takes a while for the, for the ad to get out there. And finally, I'm just going to add that it's, unless someone's reading every page, if you have a bad position in the magazine, uh, your ad could very easily be missed, but guess what? You're still going to get charged for an impression because anyone who subscribes to or buys the magazine is counted as an impression. Okay, let me just go down here. Oh, what the heck was that? I don't even know. Okay, well, come on, fellas. There we go. This is from your book. Upscale and niche audiences, advantages of magazines, getting attention, hanging around. That's the long time magazines tend to live in the household, including my ex-wife, who has stacks of vanity fairs going back Lord knows how long. Disadvantages, the, um, the lead time to get published. And digital downsizing. Well, I guess websites, um, you know, you, the ads aren't as big on the websites. Future of magazines. Well, increase the law. Well, what do you guys think? What do you think? Will these um, these warehouses of content that are chosen by 
accomplished and knowledgeable people slash editors. Are, are all of us out here going to keep subscribing to, to them to get the special content we want, either online or in, in a printed version or whatever it is? Is this going to continue? I kind of think it will, I have to say. Uh, I just I, I just can't imagine, maybe it won't always be printed, but I just can't imagine that particular mode of entertainment. It's entertainment. It's a way to spend a couple of hours, as we said, way at the beginning of this presentation. And for people who like to read, and not just listen and watch, but read and kind of use their imaginations and spend some bit of leisure time. I mean, I think that... In one form or another, magazines will uh, exist into the future. So, um, next class is, well, of course, that's not accurate. So, now I'm going to have to go and do this again. Oh, 228. I'm going to say 36. I hope I'm right. If I'm not, send me an email. I'm going to post uh, a week from today, at the latest, um, a lecture on radio, the first electronic medium, and um, I'm going to want you to read these chapters about radio for the next class. Um, so, what do we talk about today? Um, we talked about direct mail. We looked at some key types of direct mail, um, uh, a standalone piece, uh, a, a classic direct mail package that comes in an envelope, um, catalogs. We talked about the high price of many kinds of direct mail, given the cost of mailing and production. We talked about the beautiful color reproduction, the depth of sale, and uh, Yes, it's, it could be a thousand dollars cost per thousand, like a dollar, right, for each piece. But the impression is very good and very deep, even though it's expensive. And uh, there's a future for direct mail because email boxes are full, and the other regular terrestrial, real world mailboxes maybe not so full anymore. We then we then really dug into magazines spending, saying that it's uh, more has been declining in terms of ad spending in magazines. It's only 6 or 7% of worldwide ad spending. We looked at the history of magazines and that these are the purpose of them in, the, in our world and in our lives is being able to spend several hours reading and looking at things that we enjoy. Uh, we talked about buying magazines. Are you buying the national edition or the regional or local edition or demographic edition? And then your choice of magazine is going to be determined by your, your key target market for your prospecting. And then you're going to find the magazines uh, that your key target prospects like to read and subscribe to and buy. And then you're going to start your negotiating uh, with those magazines. We looked at the industry, trade associations, as the Magazine Publishers Association has now been renamed. So we showed you actually a presentation about magazines and why they're still relevant, which talked about uh, it's not just the printed magazine, it's the online version, it's the mobile version, it's the, you know, it's everything magazines do. It's the fact that people who read magazines are social influencers. They're opinion influencers. They have lots of friends. They like the paper, tactical, or tactile, I should say, reading of magazine. Um, we looked at magazine measurement, and it used to be the Audit Bureau of Circulation, and now it's a whole new outfit. We looked at a video, and they, too, are counting not just the print <clears throat> magazine impressions, but also the web and other things and kind of multiplying impressions. Um, we said that a magazine impression is based on anyone who, who gets the magazine, uh, times a pass along value. So they're very, very inflated because we don't know if each of those people is going to see our ad, do we? Um, 
And again, this gets back to the importance of positioning within the magazine and getting the right placement so your ad can be looked at. We reviewed some leading companies, all the changes, the fact that Time Inc. doesn't even exist anymore. Measurement I've already discussed a bit. In the future, well, there'll still be, we think, uh, I think, uh, a need in the market you know, among consumers to be able to have a reading text and visual experience with content that's been selected for them that they like a lot. And that, as they say, is that.